We change behavior because we see the world differently. One of the really important things about art is we have that aha moment. We react to it emotionally and our brain processes our feelings and our thoughts, maybe information that's given to us. And we might walk out of an installation and think, oh, and as a result of that, oh, we start thinking differently and then we do things differently. I love the, the kind of perfect dialogue between something ancient, i.e. ice, and then something contemporary. And also the idea of the, the core uh, or, you know, it's sort of derivation etymologically from, you know, the heart or the, the very essential part of a fruit. Having to find those things that are essential to the conversation and that's a tricky thing, I think, you know, what is essential in this conversation about, you know, our relationship to the earth. As we put more and more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, the climate models tell us that temperature will inevitably rise, perhaps by as much as two degrees Celsius by the end of the century. As a consequence, sea level will continue to rise, perhaps by another meter, again by the end of the century. This is going to have an impact on every individual on Earth. The sculpture behind me is trapping a sample of air from 1765. The level of carbon dioxide in that is 280 parts per million. Today we're living in a world of 415 parts per million, rising by two or three parts per million every year. The goal of COP is try to reduce that level of carbon dioxide entering our atmosphere to try to limit the level of temperature and sea level rise over the next centuries. Now it's difficult to pinpoint exactly when the Industrial Revolution began, but what we've chosen is the year 1765, which is the year that James Watt, a Scottish inventor, improved the steam engine to such an extent that it started to be taken up by and used for industrial processes. And almost immediately the atmosphere responded. So within, within a few years of, 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 of the steam engine being invented, the levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere began to rise. We only know this because we can get the old atmosphere from the ice. There's no instrumental records from the time that were reliable enough to tell us what carbon dioxide was then. What's immediate from, from being here and seeing the glass for the first time and hearing the, mach the machinery and the processes, the industrial kind of process and the fact that 1765 is the agreed date for the threshold of the Anthropocene era. In my terms, it's like, when did industry start affecting our climate? Actually, it being a clearly man-made shape, there's an echo of this industrial. It's about the sort of natural and the industrial. Tree rings or stalactites in caves or peat bogs or corals or marine sediments, these all remember something about the climate of the past in their chemistry or their physical makeup. But the thing about the ice that's completely unique is these trapped bubbles of air. So the trapped bubbles of air and the climate make a very powerful story and that tells us that when we look at the modern atmosphere, the modern climate, it is changing very rapidly. How does the encounter between the art and the visitor, that's where I think the art is. It's the polarity between the ice which is the material thing and the human encounter, so the human and the non-human. The slightly reckless way in which we've allowed ourselves the freedom to explore things and not be afraid to fail. Wanting to retain some of the stratified geological ice-like qualities of the glass, but have some of the kind of contemporary precision of sculpture, those things that can't be prescriptively known. I love that because it means that we've allowed ourselves to, to embrace some of the things that have been discovered in the making itself. So what we're taking to COP, as well as the glass sculpture, we're also taking a section of ice core. 
It's not refrigerated. We're trying to go for the low carbon impact display of an ice core. So it's going to be slowly melting over the time of COP. And what Wayne has done, the artist has done, he's captured the sound of this and he projects it into the room. So as well as the ice melting, time dripping away, time ticking away, you're hearing the gas from the past being released into the atmosphere and the room is filled with sound of the air being released from the, the old ice. I'm looking forward to seeing it in the space between because we'll have the two pieces in the same space and sort of comparing the two. What, what does that make you think about? A very different physical form but the sort of same sort of glowing, interesting, transparent bit at the core that we're looking at, but they are quite different. When people walk in, we would want them to give themselves the opportunity to pause, to reflect and discover. For all its high-tech and ancient qualities, there is a meditative quality about the work that will allow people to both think and feel. So I, I guess we want people to go away with a greater awareness of our relationship to the past, present and future. Time ticking away. Time that's running out in our battle against the levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, temperature rise, climate change, and the impacts on humans. Art is, I think, very important because it is an encapsulation of a lot of complexity. A subject like climate change, which is so incredibly complex, you need to engage with you know, emotionally. The challenge that we all face at the moment is learning faster than the world is changing around us. Art is an enjoyable way of learning. <laughs>